Today, I thought I'd dive into 10 things I hate about 3D printing. And just to be clear, I love 3D printing. It's just some of the things 3D printing adjacent. It'll be fun. Starting us out at number 10, prices. They're all over the place. 3D printer prices rise and fall faster than crypto. And then you see a sale that makes you think you saved $100, and then you realize it was marked up last week. And what about free shipping? <laughs> well, that adds $20 at checkout because your total is just one penny short. One penny. Then there's the subscription fees. It's kind of like paying to use your own printer. Now, I don't mind a few here and there, but it seems like every database now wants you to pay for more and more. And filament prices, they're no better. I've seen the same spool swing $5 from week to week. And what about those bundles that assume everybody needs 10 spools of white or 10 spools of black? Most home printers don't even use 10 spools of a different color in a single month. At number nine, I have marketing hype. And I think you know what I mean. <laughs> Seems like a new 3D printer is released every week or so. And of course, this one is the best ever. You see things like fastest printer ever until you read the fine print that says draft mode, 0.5 millimeter layer height, stuff like that. AI assisted printing, well, that means it might blink an LED when something goes wrong. Quiet operation, but it's louder than your vacuum cleaner. I mean, it is quieter than a train though. Enclosed for safety. Translation, a plastic box with no filters and zero airflow. 10,000 millimeters a second travel speed. But the bed isn't big enough to ramp up to even a thousand or so. For number eight, I went with rude people in forums and comments. Now, I debated on putting this one in here at all because I know it's gonna stir the pot with some people, but I think we've all seen it, and yeah, I kinda get ticked off sometimes. There's always the experts who respond and they just say, Google it. Or even the more helpful people who brag about stuff instead of helping. Things like, mine prints perfectly, so you must be doing it wrong. And that goes right along with the, I've never used that printer, but here's my opinion crowd, you know. And then there's this one. Threads that turn into arguments over brands instead of helping. My favorite's when you're told if you have a bamboo lab printer, well, throw it in the trash. It's kind of like hollering, get off my lawn when you live on the third floor of an apartment building. Get off my lawn. Why can't we just be nice and helpful or don't respond at all. And yeah, I see the irony with this list. Next, number seven is you can't fix it yourself, usually. Now, I admit, I haven't been into 3D printing since 2010, though I haven't put together one from scratch with or without a wooden frame. And I've also never assembled a car or a house from scratch. But I have made repairs over the years to a number of my 3D printers and what used to be something like a $3 fix now requires a 47 step teardown and special cables and all that. Things like replace the thermistor. Well, that sounds easy until you realize it's buried under 10 screws and a load of hot glue and good luck with the documentation that looks machine translated three times through three different languages. For number six, I decided to go with filament. And aside from prices, why are there so many problems with the one thing you need the most to make a 3D print? For instance, you find the perfect color and it gets discontinued next month. Or one spool prints great, the next is like wet spaghetti. And those are both straight out of the box and the same brand. Oh yeah, and color matching, well, trying to do those across brands, well, that's like the worst guessing game ever created. And have you read your filament horoscope today? Humidity, dust, temperature, welcome to the filament equivalent of astrology. Mercury's in retrograde. My sign is Libra, so I should dry my PLA in the oven for two hours if it's raining or if my dog barks. And no, I 
don't really know what any of that means. Let's move into the top five with slicers. And if you have more than one brand of 3D printer, you probably know where I'm going with this. It seems like every printer brand insists on having their own branded slicer. And a lot of times they're just rebranding Orca Slicer and making it worse. I recently used a rebranded Orca Slicer for a brand that was uh, using a version from over a year ago. So every time I loaded a newer file I got online, well, I got errors telling me some of the features in the file don't even exist. So don't get me wrong. I know brands want their own take on things and sometimes it's important, but at least give me the option to stick with just one. Switching slicers, sometimes it feels like I'm learning a new computer or operating system. Going from Windows to Mac, Orca Slicer to Creality, good luck. Now, number four kind of goes along with number eight, but I really think it deserves a spot to itself. Bad advice. I'm no guru, but since I've been doing this channel, a lot of people ask me for 3D printing help. And I've been doing that kind of thing with Windows since MS-DOS 1 in the early 80s. You're 14,000 years old? I'll tell you this, if I don't know for sure, I'll let you know and I double check. Online though, totally different story. And you know what I mean. There's all sorts of stuff online. Things like just increase your flow rate to 200%. Well, great. Now you have a plastic volcano. This secret cura setting will fix all your adhesion problems. Spoiler, no, it won't. And this one gets me so frustrated. Watching one random TikTok video that leads to three wasted days of failed prints and trying to figure out all the default settings. And no, I didn't do this, but I've seen the comments. All right, it's time for the top three, and I'm gonna start out with customer support. And this isn't just limited to 3D printers. Um, I'd be willing to bet we've all experienced some form of customer support torture over the years. And one of the worst ones, for me at least, is when you finally get a reply in three weeks or whatever, and then they say something along the equivalent of, try turning it off and on again, or tell you to update the firmware or software. And then there's the endless loops. Please send video. Well, you send it. And they send back, please send another video, but sideways. I'm just going to say this one and move on. Live chat that feels more like a digital suggestion box. <sighs> you got any suggestions? Now number two is one that I really have a problem with. Horrible models. Now, I'm sure you know this one. When you see a great model on a database, you think it's all ready to print, then you get it in the slicer and it has floating parts, missing walls, and zero chance of printing without defying physics. And no, supports aren't going to fix all these problems. I especially despise all that AI-generated junk that looks amazing in the render, but explodes when you slice it. And I don't think some of the posters even own a 3D printer. So remember, if it doesn't have an actual picture of a printed model, well, be very skeptical. And that brings us to my number one thing I hate about 3D printing. Filament waste. You know, poop. You said a bad word. Huh? This has only been an issue over the last few years, and yeah, mainly because of Bamboo Lab printers. And I admit, I love being able to print in colors, but while it makes beautiful results, it also makes beautiful trash mountains. And I have so many bags and boxes and I only keep PLA. Now, it's not just failed prints, but those do really add up when you're prototyping new designs. But there's also the purge towers, the calibration cubes, the supports, and so many benchies. But I'm hoping for the day, someday, when my children, maybe their children, they can live in a world where there is no poop. I, filament poop, I mean. Wow, I thought this list might be a little more therapeutic than, than it turned out, but hey, at least you know you're not alone when you have those moments of frustration with 3D printing, right? Did I miss one that really bugs you? Well, let us all know in the comments, but please be nice and please subscribe so you don't miss out on any future 
more positive videos. Thanks for watching and hopefully you had as much fun with this list as I did. And again, remember, no, I don't hate 3D printing, just some of the things that go along with it. But regardless of the problems, 3D printing, we all know it's getting better and more enjoyable all the time. So keep printing, keep having fun as we all continue to learn, create, and amaze. So much poop.